So here it is, the Nerf Fury Fire. Um, as you can see, this, uh, this Nerf gun looks somewhat similar to a previous Nerf gun that I went ahead and modded, and that gun would have been the Nerf Maverick. You can see that it retains its revolver-style cylinder in the middle, but a few things have changed. First of all, it's obviously bigger. It not only longer, but the body of it, the main body, is also bigger than the Maverick. And with that bigger frame, you get an increased um, ammo supply. It, the cylinder contains ten darts, as where the Maverick only had six. The, uh, the other obvious thing is that the cocking mechanism has changed. It's gone from the sl pistol slide back on the top to the more shotgun-esque pump in the front. And, uh, what else? The, okay, the ammo it takes is this. Well, this is what it comes with, because these, um, the, this um, particular Nerf gun is part of a, a new line from Nerf called Dart Tag, where you shoot these Velcro tip darts at each other, and it sticks to a vest that you wear. And then that way you can recognize that I hit you because you have two of these orange darts stuck to you kind of thing, and the other dark color is green. Okay, so, um... Getting back to um, some of the improvements, I, now we talked about the, before we go in, I'm just going to talk about this new arrangement. The shotgun, uh, besides looking cooler, it also does two things. It makes the barrel longer, so you get better accuracy. And also, because your um, charging hand, or the, the, the hand that's cocking the gun, stays on the front, where you would have it anyways while you're shooting, when you cock you maintain good control of the gun. See, with the Nerf Maverick, since you had to have a hand back here sliding this back and forth to arm every time you fire, you were putting downward pressure here, and which caused this to pivot up. So you had barrel climb every time you were um, shooting. So, now, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to open this thing up, and I'm going to tell you now, right now, as a little disclaimer, if you're going to mob this gun, have some time set aside. It's not that anything's super confusing in there. It's just that when you put it back together, you have to make sure multiple things are set just right before you close it. And if not, you have to open it up again and try. So I'm going to go ahead and open this right now. And in the interest of time, I've already removed the screws. The screws are all real easy to find, so no hidden screws. And you're only going to unscrew the screws on the main body, okay? Do not bother unscrewing those. This whole piece is just going to stay put together. Okay, there's not, not, there's no reason to go in there. So here we go. I'm going to pull it apart. Okay, that came out really well. Now, the first thing you do when you open this, you want to look and see where everything is. And if you did it nice and smooth, like I just did, most things will stay in, in the place they were. Start here. Um, the trigger, you can see that the trigger has this long black rod that goes into the cylinder, the back of it. This is what's going to assist you, uh, when you pull the trigger, having the um, cylinder automatically advance. It's not the only thing that does it here, but this is a big part of it. Okay, next. This here, we'll see if I can see, can you see this here? Okay, see this little, um, like this looks like a little claw? that's going around the back part of the syringe which contains the air which pushes the bullet forward um, the dart rather okay you can see how this is connected to an orange rod that goes through the middle of the cylinder and not surprisingly continues out towards the pump so when you pump, pump this thing you're pushing this back you're pushing this cylinder this uh, rod back which pushes this claw which pushes this the back part of the air tube backwards okay so that's how you go ahead and cock it now now going to this what holds it in fire position okay this is what, how this works when this comes back oops okay you can see here there's a little like a uh, little um, point here a little peak that gets locked on this cage here and I call it a cage because it looks like yeah like a frame okay so uh, this here will lock on the top of this frame and hence stop it, stop the spring, which is all compressed, from pushing the, the tube forward, and hence premature firing. So here's where you, um, it basically goes on standby, by locking on this. Now, when you pull the trigger, this whole assembly comes back. 
And if you can see, this has, it's all attached here, you can see this has a little nub which pushes this up. Now when this goes up, this little guy who was locked on the top is free, and then hence the spring uncoils and then pushes this um, air tube forward um, so it'll look like it is now, and the air goes pushed out and your dart goes flying out there. All right, so that's the basic how it goes. Now, I think, now you say, okay, well, I get how it locks and fires, and that'd be great if it was just a single dart gun. But how is all this stuff with the advancing barrels work? Well, the Nerf Maverick was a little easier to see because everything was real close up to the cylinder. As we can see here, we have this kind of remote system where you, it is this trigger, you can see this black rod. Now, I'm going to take this part in part, so... Okay, just a quick look at everything before I go. All right, let's take this out first, the tube. Um, you can see here that there's a little groove, and then you can see here, this is the inner part of the air tube, where I'm pointing now, and this is the outer part. The inner part, if you see, it has this little lip that fits into this groove. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take it out. And at the same time we take it out, we're going to free the bottom of the outer tube from this little claw, or the charging um, handle, okay? So here we go. Okay, and there you go. And the spring, okay, so there's, oh, I'll just show you the air tube real quick. Here's the air tube, see? Okay, extended, and then when it fires, it goes in there, and then it pushes the air out, okay? All right, so now we have the spring, and you can see the spring just rests on the back like that. All right, so taking out the spring, and there's one of the, if you're looking to power this thing up, you could get a spring that has the same diameter, but increased stiffness or an increased spoil, uh, an increased coil rate. The important thing is to get the same diameter so it fits around the back of the air tube, okay? All right, so then, and also, if you're going to do the increased power mod, as you've seen in my previous videos, you're going to need to increase this spring as well because this is what's maintaining it from going off prematurely. So this will have to be increased as well. Okay, now, um, well, since we're talking about springs, let's um, count the springs. We already saw one over there. Here's two. So those two are the, the main power and the thing that stops it from firing premature. But there are more springs. Um, I want you to see this spring here. If you can see, there it is. This spring is anchored to the body of the gun, so the, the green part, but you can see the other end is attached to the claw that pushes back the syringe when you push back the pump, okay? So you can tell what this spring does. It gets longer when you push back the pump, but then the spring helps this go back forward so that when you slide this forward, it's, you don't really have to pull it, you just more kind of send it forward. So that is that, okay? All right. Now that's, so what have we got? We're up to three springs now, right? Okay, well, there's two more. There's one here. Waiting for this thing to focus here. Okay, can you see that spring right there? It's really small, so, okay. This, there's this little white, you can see this little white column that goes up here. And then it goes behind some of this stuff here, and we'll explain that later. Well, there's a spring in there that keeps that thing pushed up. Now we're up to four, so where's the fifth? The fifth is under the trigger. N um, and before I take it off, I'll show you what this is. When you push the trigger back and you release your finger, the trigger comes forward, right? It would really suck if you had to actually pull the trigger forward. So the spring, basically when you push it back, the spring brings it back to this position. And I'll show you where that is right now. Um, key seat, there it is. And it's hooked onto that little, little, um, little nub there. Okay. All right. So now it's time to take out the barrel. So what I'm going to do, and remember I said don't take apart this, and I'll show you why now. When you separate this out, there we go. And you can see now we basically have this whole thing comes out as like basically one unit up here. And then we have this little rod sticking in there.